Welcome to my presentation for the Atmos workshop on the ILGO 2020 conference. My name is Johan Hatlip from the Erasmus University of Rotterdam and the University of Stuttgart. And today I'm presenting um, my research on a rolling horizon heuristic with an optimality guarantee for on-demand vehicle scheduling problems. Uh, this is joint work with Marie Schmidt, also from Erasmus University in Rotterdam. Let's have a look at why we should study this problem. So we believe that the on-demand uh, on demand transport has the potential to replace some significant part of traditional public transport. And of course, local authorities are very much interested in estimating the impact of such services on cities and the, the traffic networks if, if they indeed replace a significant part. So they usually estimate um, the traffic in cities with travel demand models. And these travel demand models assume a public transport system to be given. But in this case, the public transport, which is on demand, depends on the demand. So we need to estimate the supply, that means where the on-demand vehicles are, while estimating the demand. So we need to have a vehicle scheduling step in the travel demand model. The problem itself is quite simple. We have given some demanded vehicle trips. And the question is, what is the minimal number of vehicles um, needed to meet that demand? And where are these vehicles at a certain point of time? So it is basically just vehicle scheduling. But the structure is nevertheless different from traditional uh, vehicle scheduling for timetable public transport. Let's have a look at this. For timetable public transport, we usually consider on the in this case, um, the vertical um, stations. And we have discrete stations in the city where the public transport vehicles operate and arrive and depart. And they do so at dedicated points in time. So we have single demanded trips, and this is usually used in solution approaches. However, when you look at mobility on demand, it is, there, is, there is basically demand everywhere at any time. We don't have really stations, but we consider zones where people are or where they live and the time we don't have discrete points in time but we rather consider time intervals they are picked up or dropped off within a certain time interval so we have this macroscopic point of view here where we have non-integer demand and we have a very very uh, complete time space network that we need to consider so this different structure basically asks for a different uh, treatment um, in, in a different paper I, I developed with um, Markus Friedrich and Emily Richter from University of Stuttgart, um, well not developed, but made a very simple network flow problem uh, to solve this vehicle scheduling problem. And the formulation is very easy, so it's in P, and also for integer uh, programming easily to solvable. But for realistic problem instances, it's simply too large to be solved. So in there, um, they propose a simple heuristic um, to find feasible vehicle schedules. And that's a nice and simple approach. However, there is no guarantee on the solution quality. So when we obtain a vehicle schedule with that approach, we, we do not know whether the um, solution is optimal or how far away we are from the optimal solution. So in, in this talk, I would like you, I'd like to provide you with a different approach uh, based on a rolling horizon um, approach that can actually provide optimal solutions. So let's have a look at this. We still consider the same simple network flow problem. We want to minimize the total number of vehicles such that all demand is covered. And of course, the flow should be feasible. That means there are no vehicles disappearing or appearing at somewhere. We have basically flow conservation and nodes. And with the rolling horizon approach, we, we, we uh, simply apply this um, simple idea to split the problem into some smaller tractable pieces and solve each of them individually to optimality. So it basically looks like this. We have a horizon one here. In this case, it covers five time intervals, the first five ones. We solve this one to optimality. We obtain the solution, fix it, and go over to the next horizon. And there, we again find a solution for this one, fix it, and go on. And this step by step solve the whole time frame from the very start to the very end. To do that, we need to adjust the model a little bit. <clears throat> so it's in, in particular, we need to share information from the solution of one horizon 
with a, let's say, problem instance of the next horizon. And we do this via available vehicles. So we basically um, remember from the solution of one horizon where the vehicles end at the end of the horizon and put this in as an input to the um, flow problem um, and incorporate it in such a way. And this is how it looks like. So we basically, in the objective, we consider that there are available vehicles. We don't need to count them anymore because we already have them provided. And in the constraints, we need to make sure that in the flow conservation constraints that at each node, um, the available vehicles are also considered. At each node, we have some incoming vehicles, some outgoing vehicles, but we also need to consider that there are some vehicles available at this node. So it basically means they are considered as incoming vehicles. And we also make sure that they are routed. So there are just slight adaptions to this basic network flow problem, and the model remains easy. Um, also for integer programming, that's, that's quite nice. Um, next, we, we want to have a look at the solution quality. So as I mentioned, we split the long time frame into smaller pieces, and we solve them individually to optimality. However, we, we lose some information there. At the, at the end of one horizon, the start of the next horizon, we lose something. So the idea is to let the horizons overlap. In this graphic, I show you again the same example as before. We have one horizon um, over the first five um, time intervals. And the second horizon then doesn't have a time interval six, but at time interval four already. So we have an overlap of two time intervals in this case, four and five, in which the solution that was found in the first horizon is discarded and overwritten by the solution of the next horizon. And this goes on with the next horizon three, again, an overlap of two time intervals, and so on, horizon four, five, six. As you can see in this case, we, we need a lot more uh, horizons. That means we need to uh, solve a lot more subproblems, which also is computationally um, more expensive, but we gain um, more uh, the, that we share information between the problems and we can improve the solution quality. But of course, the question is how long should the overlap be? So the shorter it is, the less information we share, the, the less yeah, knowledge we have from the previous uh, horizon. Um, and the longer it is, the more information we have, but the more complicated it is to solve it. And in the paper, we provide you with a theorem and a proof for that, that um, we can find a globally optimal solution for the whole time frame if the overlap is at least two times the maximal distance between two zones in terms of time intervals, minus one. So the maximal distance, I'll quickly go back, is basically the horizontal length um, of such an arc. That means one arc is a trip from zone I to zone J, and the longer it is in the horizontal, that means the longer time it takes to drive from I to J, um, the longer is this distance. And two times the maximum distance, minus one. If we have this as an overlap chosen, um, the rolling horizon heuristic will provide us with an optimal solution for the whole time frame. So that's, that's quite a cool result. I, I don't want to go into the proof in detail, but just give you the, the rough idea. It, it basically says that whatever we do in the um, before the overlap can be fixed in the overlap because it's long enough. So we, we consider basically two kinds of um, trips that are taken in the overlap. The first ones are the vehicle trips that are demanded. So we, we actually transport some passengers there. So we do a trip to transport passengers. And these are, of course, demanded no matter whether we look at horizon one or horizon two. So since we consider the time intervals in the horizon one already, um, we make sure that these demanded vehicle trips are met and we have vehicles that are available. And then second, there's, there are possibly some vehicle trips um, that are not for demanded um, for a demanded vehicle trips, but they just um, wait in a zone, for example, or they just relocate the vehicles. And these vehicle trips, they they might these are decisions that might be mm, not suitable for what happens afterwards in Horizon Two. So, for example, afterwards from starting from time interval six. And since we chose the overlap long enough, all these decisions that are made in Horizon One means in this case, in interval one and two, that can't be changed anymore. 
can be undone in the in the overlap. So this is the basic idea of the proof. It's a bit hard to show it uh, by in, in detail, but it works out. You can check it out in the paper. Um, when having a look at this second part of um, vehicle flows, where we um, send vehicles from bet uh, between zones that are actually not meeting demand, we can distinguish between two kinds of them. Some we um, say we call them reasonable, that means these vehicle trips are there to meet demand or to relocate to meet demand in the zone of their destination. And some of them we say they are unreasonable, so they, they do not have a proper reason to drive around. And if we forbid those unreasonable vehicle flows, we can actually improve the optimal, uh, optimality criterion. And we need to actively do this because we just minimize the number of vehicles, so any kind of vehicle flow is feasible as long as we have a minimal number of vehicles. So let's have a look at the theorem first. Um, it is written there, if we um, ensure that there is no unreasonable vehicle flow, the rolling horizon heuristic will find an optimal solution if the overlap is at least the maximum distance between two zones. It used to be two times the maximum distance minus one. Now we could improve it to maximum distance. So the reduction of the, nece um, of the necessary overlap is almost one half. Um, this significant, uh, significantly um, decreases the computational effort we have to put in to solve um, instances to optimality. And it's not only a theoretical construct, and the paper will provide you with um, um, would call it an artificial cost setting, so we modify the, the objective function a little bit, um, which still allows us to minimize the number of vehicles, but at the same time um, forbid unreasonable trips. So um, with this cost setting, we, we basically provide the framework to use actually theorem 2 and find optimal solutions with a, run, a rolling horizon um, heuristic with this um, smaller overlap. Okay, let me quickly wrap up what we had so far. Um, we have the rolling horizon heuristic to solve the vehicle scheduling problem, and we provided an optimality guarantee there. We also know that the op uh, overlap should be chosen as small as possible. It's given by the theorem, basically. So we, we don't have any uh, gains by having a longer overlap, but more computational effort. And with this, we can actually solve huge instances um, to optimality. Um, one of the ones we dealt with was um, a real-world uh, travel demand model for the Stuttgart region, and it had in total um, in, in the range of 10 to the power of 8 uh, variables. And with this one, it was possible to, to solve it to optimality. However, it is still not yet clear um, how to choose the length of the horizon. So, so far, we do know that the overlap should be as small as possible but at least the maximum distance um, to, to have the guarantee to have optimal solutions. But we do not know whether we should have long horizons and for that also just few subproblems for each instance, or whether we have short horizons and then many subproblems, but each of them is smaller. So we did uh, some experiments with this um, on randomly generated instances for, of, of distant, uh, different sizes. Um, in the top left corner of the graph, you can see written set equals 20. That means we have 20 zones in this instance. And on the x-axis, you have the number of subproblems, and on the y-axis, the relative um, CPU time. So when solving um, several of these uh, instances with 20 zones, at once, that means with just one subproblem, so we don't really use the rolling horizon heuristic there, we just solve it at once. Um, the relative CPU time is one, that means it is fastest to solve it at once. As soon as we use the rolling horizon heuristic and split it into parts and have multiple um, subproblems, for example, two because we have two horizons and then two subproblems and an overlap in between, we have to spend more time on solving it. In this case, it takes um, 70% longer. And for this instance, the more subproblems we have, the higher the relative CPU times are. And I'll start an animation now to um, make you see how this develops. If we increase 
the size of the instance. For example, 40, 60, and so on, a few hundreds up to 240. And as you can see, the, the image shifts towards um, the case that it is faster to solve some few sum problems instead of the whole instance at once. Um, and we can also see the bigger the instance, it was basically what you can see during the uh, animation, the bigger the instance, the more subproblems pay off. So this fastest setting that, made, that means the number of subproblems that were um, used to solve these instance size the fastest, means the one moves more and more towards the right in the graph. And what we can also gain from this is that the rolling horizon also brings a speed up for big instances, while for the small ones, for 30 equals 20, it was fastest to just solve the whole thing at once. For bigger interest, uh, for bigger instances where the whole thing gets interesting, it is better to use the rolling horizon heuristic. And the nice thing is also, it, it seems to be quite robust about uh, the actual number of subproblems. It doesn't really matter whether we have three or eight of those but we will have some speed up compared to just solving the whole problem at once. Okay, let me conclude with this. Um, we presented a rolling horizon heuristic and we also developed uh, an optimality guarantee for this. So we can solve this, in particular this on-demand vehicle scheduling problem to optimality with this heuristic, which was not tractable beforehand. Um, and the other advantage is also we have a speed up for the large instances. However, I was mainly talking about um, the time aspect. If we have some final discretization in space, that means if you have a lot more um, traffic zones, the small subproblems also get quite big and might be intractable. So it might be for these cases where we have a lot more zones, that means final discretization space, we need some different approaches where we split it up per region or something. However, we could not find any optimality guarantee for these cases. Um, some future work. On the one hand, in particular for the um, application of on-demand vehicle scheduling, we, we thought of looking into some um, possible extensions, for example, to consider also driving costs, not only the number of vehicles, or also uncertainty of the demand trips. And in general, Although this um, was motivated and developed for this application of vehicle scheduling for on-demand services, um, we actually just provide a rolling horizon heuristic for a very generic network flow problem. And also the proof mainly works for the fact that decisions that we take in one horizon do not reach till the far end, but they, they have the, their effect has a limit and we can, we can undo these decisions. Um, so it might be also interesting to look into um, the fact whether it is possible to generalize the proof or the applications. And so we can also use this result for, for different, different problem sets or different applications. Um, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the talk. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to send me an email to heartlib at rsm.nl. Um, Bye.